Hello and welcome to this introduction in prompt writing uh, where we will discuss the basic, the basic of the basics basically <laughs> of prompt writing. So, um, what is prompt writing? Well, uh, we've already discussed about uh, the interface of ChatGPT. How do you and how do you add a new chat here? Unfortunately, as you can see right here, history is temporarily unavailable. This might be an error you might see sometimes, but that doesn't matter right now. Uh, <clears throat> we're here in ChatGPT, and as of today, if you want to have access to ChatGPT 4, you need the plus version, right? So uh, we will work with ChatGPT 4 because this is the best tool you can have. It's much better than ChatGPT 3 in a various uh, ways, as we've discussed before. And um, basically, in order for you to change from ChatGPT the default module, you will come here above uh, where it says uh, model, and you will change it from default to ChatGPT 4. Now be attentive, uh, ChatGPT4 currently has a, has, has a cap of 25 messages every 3 hours, uh, which is a problem for us, but uh, we will be fine. So, um, back to the topic of the lesson, introduction to prompt writing. Um, the objectives of the course are to make you understand the basics of prompt writing, then identify common elements of prompts, and then develop strategies for writing effective prompts. These are the objectives for the uh, category or the part of this course where we talk about uh, prompt engineering, uh, because after that we will have another part of the course where, we'll, where we will talk about um, actual use cases. Uh, so um, be tuned because it will be a great course, great experience for you. So these are mainly the objectives for this part of the course. Now, what is a prompt? I sincerely believe that most of you know what a prompt is, but just in case, a prompt is a statement or question given by the user to the chatbot. Prompts are the core of using any chatbot software, just like ChatGPT. It is basically the input here. Now, we can differentiate prompts based on some criterion, uh, such as um, are they the main prompt? So the main prompt is usually the prompt with the task. Then there is conditioning prompts. Then there is, uh, you know, um, error responses prompts. There are tons of prompts you can use in ChatGPT. Uh, we will go through most of them. Uh, and you'll, you will get more comfortable with using prompts as we go through. Um, why are prompts important? Well, it's, it might be obvious, but prompts in ChatGPT are essential uh, because it's what makes the AI to generate the responses. So, um, as you provide a starting point of information, you help ChatGPT to predict the next war because ChatGPT is truly nothing but uh, a software that uses this technique of predicting the next word. It has an algorithm that uh, says which word is more likely to be the next one. And it chooses based on that algorithm. Uh, and it does it so well that, that it, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, when you explain to someone that ChatGPT only does predict the next sequence of words, it seems counterintuitive because it's much more than that. And it's much more than that actually it's amazing so um again you have to provide good prompts because um this is what get the response this is what will get you the response and the next slide is all about that writing prompts for chat gpt uh, writing prompts are important for chat gpt system as they provide initial input to the model as we've discussed um and they can be used to generate creative and interesting conversations or maybe some information. Maybe you need some help with a task. Maybe you need a table that to organize your, I don't know, stuff. It's various contexts you can use ChatGPT. There are lots of ways. So it's not just a single way of using it. So that's why you have to 
have some critical thinking and creativity to realize the vastness of this spectrum of how much you can use ChatGPT. Now, what are the challenges in writing prompts? Uh, well, creating well-crafted chatbot prompts can that capture multiple topics and don't lead the conversation can be challenging. It's important for the prompts to be clear and broad enough to elect a variety of responses. What does this mean? Well, um, it mainly means that you should use mostly open prompts. We will discuss what are open prompts a bit later. Um, and also it means that the how, how well the output of ChatGPT is, is mainly based on how well you've written the prompt. So if you get a bad, a bad response from ChatGPT, it's more likely that the reason the response is bad is because your prompt wasn't good enough. Because ChatGPT4, I mean, it's it's next level. It's it's out of this century. So uh, most likely, if you don't get the response you want, it's because you didn't write in a good enough prompt. And we will talk about what is a good enough prompt in this section. So, I mean, don't get frustrated or uh, discouraged if you don't know some of these things. Uh, this is a course for everyone, beginners, intermediates, and a bit for advanced. So, uh, I mean, if you're an, uh, an intermediate or an advanced, feel free to skip some of these introductory le lessons. But uh, if you're a beginner, I mean, it will all make sense. Okay, so let's move on. So, uh, introduction prompt writing. It's important to remember that, you know, in order to get good responses, you need to get to give ChatGPT good prompts. This is basically what you have to remember the most out of this lesson. You need to give ChatGPT good prompts. Uh, also, remember what are prompts. I mean, I think you will do remember what prompts are. Uh, and if you can, also remember the types of prompts. But if you don't, uh, we will talk about them in the following lessons. So it's a, it's it's okay. Um, and pretty much that's it uh, with. Introduction to prompt writing. Um, now, I suggest before I teach you anything on prompt writing, before I do anything like that, I suggest you go by yourself in ChatGPT and try out some prompts uh, before seeing uh, some of the lessons, some of the future lessons, lectures uh, I will uh, give you. So just go and experiment. And after you try with two or maybe three prompts, come back and we will go further into the types of prompts. To another lesson of our course where we will discuss about the types of prompts there are in ChatGPT. I mean, um, you can divide the prompts into a lot of types. Uh, they're very different um, and you can go ahead and have like a hundred types of prompts, but we won't do that in this lesson. We will look at the main categories of prompts there are in ChatGPT. And not only, I mean, in all chatbot applications and generally, what are the biggest types of prompts? So let's go ahead. So um, basically we'll cover, uh, as I said, the types of prompts in writing. And the main ones will be open-ended prompts and closed-ended prompts, which are subtypes of the biggest types of prompts so if i can say that um and the biggest types of prompts are simple and complex so prompts mainly divide into two categories simple and complex and then simple prompts divide into simple and closed ended or simple and open ended and the same goes for complex prompts complex prompts divide into complex and open ended or complex and closed ended and we will also discuss how to use each type of prompt effectively for this part of the course, where we will go a bit further into prompt engineering, because this course can be separated into two main parts. The first one will be prompt engineering and how you can use um, this uh, information I'm giving you to craft better prompts in any case scenario, because I might give you some examples uh, of actual prompts and you can use them. I mean, yeah, of course you can do that, but I mean, for what good? if you will not be able uh, to craft your own prompts effectively. So we will 
focus in this part of the course on how you can craft really great prompts and only after that we will go uh, even further and see some um, real life uh, examples of how you can use prompts anyway we will identify the purpose of each prompt type uh, and we will also analyze the effectiveness of prompts and we will do that um, in this section all right uh, now the first category of prompts is the simple prompts are the simple prompts so simple prompts are just like just what you might think they're what they're called like they're simple they don't have many details they're quite to the subject they i mean that's the thing they don't have details easy to remember easy to understand and now they divide into open-ended prompts and closed-ended prompts and then there is leading prompts which are actually something else a bit separate uh, uh, which we will discuss a bit later uh, you can see them as a different category i will tell you why in a bit um, so open-ended prompts are questions that give ChatGPT creative freedom what does it mean well it means that the question and not only the question because when we talk about open-ended prompts we mean questions that are uh that don't have a specific answer and that can allow for creative responses but when you're when we're talking about prompts in general it can be not, not only a question it can be any 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 prompt you might have and that doesn't require a yes or no or a factual response if it doesn't require that then it might i mean it mostly it most likely it's an open prompt open edit prompt uh so for example you can type in ChatGPT, can you write me a story about a rabbit that goes into space uh it's open-ended or um can you tell me something interesting i might not know so this is also an open-ended ended prompt it gives ChatGPT the full creative uh freedom moving on we have closed ended prompts uh closed ended prompts are basically prompts that uh, or questions in our case there are prompts you can think of them as questions that have a specific answer so they don't give ChatGPT as much freedom in terms of creativity if for example you ask ChatGPT, um is this is the earth flat ChatGPT will answer the earth is not flat the earth is round uh and you cannot argue with i mean you can argue with ChatGPT, and ChatGPT will actually um accept i mean it actually adapts to your thinking uh we'll not go a lot deeper into that um but you, you get the point a closed ended prompt doesn't give ChatGPT much creative freedom because it will answer with uh, yes no uh, or maybe it will answer with uh, the fact and of course after that we'll go even deeper and explain the concept you're talking about but it's still a closed ended prompt because it didn't give ChatGPT lots of creative freedom uh, so that uh, the outcome is quite predictable and then there are leading prompts which as i told you are something different because they can be oftentimes um, confused and they are confused and they're quite the same thing as complex prompts leading prompts basically are simple prompts uh, that have a few details which might lead the prompt towards a desired outcome but this is actually what complex prompts are so if let's say you have a simple prompt but you also have one detail or two in the prompt you can consider it a simple and leading prompt but if you have lots of details such as the topic the information about yourself and all that kind of stuff you can consider you can consider the prompt a complex prompt so this is it this is a wrap up with the simple prompts you have open-ended closed-ended and i mean uh you can remember only these two this is a separate case but i mean it's up to you um uh, whether you consider simple and leading prompts in the same category or you consider leading prompts as part of complex prompts anyway let's move on with the next slide uh where we talk about uh, complex prompts it's the same thing it's i mean it's, it's the same thing 
you have open prompts, open edit prompts, closed edit prompts, and complex prompts, which are um, basically, I mean, you have a complex prompt, and then you can have, you can make it even more complex. Um, you'll, you'll get more familiar with this as we go through, uh, with some examples in the following lessons. Uh, so open edit prompts, you already know what they are. The only difference is that you are more, uh, you, uh, you got more details, so it's more complex. You can add topic at the beginning of the prompt. You can add information about yourself. You can add, uh, let's say, um, a detail or a condition which might shape the uh, output, the outcome. Uh, it's the same thing, only more details. We will show. I will show you some examples uh, in the following lesson. Closed and it prompts the same thing, only that there is yes or no answer. Only that. Um, so, for example, a closed but also complex prompt uh, could be: Can humans breathe underwater uh, without tank oxygen for more than six minutes? Right. So, this is a closed and it prompt. It it it. I mean, ChatGPT has to provide you with a fact, yes or no, yes or no. It doesn't have a lot of creative freedom, but it's more detailed, so we can consider it a complex prompt. And then there is complex, complex prompts. These are really detailed, uh, but I should avoid them. This might seem uh, counterintuitive, but you should avoid the complex, complex prompts. It's better to not get into them because they're worse than these two. These are a great. These are the best two. So, I mean, in general, I always tend to recommend using only open-ended and complex prompts. That's it. You don't need anything else. Um, there might be some exceptions, but most of the time, if you need some information, you don't need a closed ended prompt. You can ask ChatGPT to give you an open ended prompt. I mean. Most of the time, this is the gold. This is where all the gold lays. So we will try to learn how to master open-ended prompts mostly because the rest of them, you don't need them that much. And um, as I said, it's, it might sound counterintuitive, but, but I'll, I'll explain to you why you should never use complex, complex prompts. Uh, and, um, you know, that's pretty much with the, the main types of prompts. And the key to understanding prompts to, is to analyze the type of prompt given. And this is what we will do in the following lessons. We will go ahead and chat GPT and we will start crafting prompts. So let's end with the slides. I don't like slides. Probably you don't like them too. I needed them to get you started into the topic we're discussing right here. I will close the slides and I, I hopefully I will not open it again until the end of this uh, course because I'm all about uh, examples. So as I said, let's get into examples. Our course where we will discuss about crafting um, simple prompts. Uh, we will go really fast through uh, the structures we have already learned and we will see how can we craft these simple prompts uh, so without any further ado let's go ahead and let's type in our first prompt um, so i will start with a simple and open-ended prompt all right uh, let me see what can i do here so um our open-ended simple prompt will look something like this uh, can you tell me so or just tell me um, a trivial fact uh, about something few people know about let's hit enter did you know that honey never spoils? Archaeologists have discovered pots of honey in ancient Egyptian tombs that are over 3000 years old and it is still edible. Huh, interesting. <clears throat> so this is an example of a simple and open-ended prompt 
it allowed ChatGPT to, provi to provide me with an example it wanted. Uh, let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT for something else. This time I will use a closed ended simple prompt. Um, what is the capital of France? I will hit enter and I will get this answer. The capital of France is Paris. So I got this answer from this closed uh, ended simple prompt. Sometimes ChatGPT might provide you with more information than you actually ask for. That's okay. But this is still a closed ended simple prompt because it's it doesn't have details that would change the outcome too much or I mean First of all, this is a closed prompt because it's a fact that the capital of France is Paris and ChatGPT doesn't have much uh, creative freedom here. And about here, it's also a simple prompt because it doesn't have many details. Now, that's it. Not too much to talk about here. In this lesson, we will talk about um, how can we craft more complex prompts. Well, well, I mean, you already know the concepts since we've discussed them with you in that uh, lecture where I showed you all of the types of the prompts. But, I mean, it's always easier to remember when you experiment and when you, uh, when you have some real examples. So let's go ahead and have some real examples because I love real examples. Um, let's start with a complex prompt that is uh, open-ended, all right? So, in the last example, the last time we had this prompt in the past lesson where we have asked ChatGPT for a trivial fact, let's let's do the same thing. So, provide me with a trivial fact that few people know about. This is a sim is this is still a simple prompt. It is open ended, but how do we make it complex? Well, it's simple. We add details. Only one detail that um, can change the whole outcome uh, can make this prompt complex. So the detail I will add is the following topic. And I will say that the topic is astronomy. Uh, and if I hit enter, I will get something else. Astronomy fact, the dwarf planet Haumea, located in the Kuiper Belt, has such a rapid rotation that a day on its surface lasts only about 3.9 Earth hours. These extreme rotations causes Haumea to be shaped like an elongated ellipsoid, making it one of the most uniquely shaped objects in our solar system. Interesting fact. So, um, here we have a open-ended complex prompt. By adding this detail, we made it a complex prompt. Now you can make it very complex by making it by adding more details. Uh, but as I told you about the complex complex prompts, um, we'll go into them a bit later. Uh, and why you should not use complex complex prompts? So very complex prompts. Uh, you'll realize why a bit later. Right now, it might seem, uh, you know counterintuitive or even stupid so don't focus on that let's move on we have um, the open-ended complex prompt let's go ahead with the closed ended complex prompt and so in the last example with the simple prompt i show i showed you how um a closed prompt was ha has given me the answer that paris is the capital of france now <clears throat> let's type that same prompt again what is the capital of France? But this time I will make a change. All right, so if I, if I think about this, I have an idea, a new idea. Is the capital of France Paris, London, or uh, let's say Berlin? So, um, this is a closed ended prompt that is complex because I also add conditions here. Basically, I give options 
to ChatGPT. I don't only ask ChatGPT the question, I also give ChatGPT some options to choose from. So I go even further to limiting its ability to be creative. I mean, of course, it will not be creative in this case, but by giving ChatGPT options, you go even further, further and you can consider this um, complex, close, ended prompt. And let's hit enter. And we will get the following answer. The capital of France is Paris. And that's it. I mean, easy as that. Now, I hope this ex these examples helped you understand more clearly uh, the difference between complex and simple prompts and the difference between closed ended and open ended prompts. Uh, because we will mostly use um, complex open ended prompts since they're the most uh, useful in most cases. But it depends. There are some uh, exceptions. I always tend to use open ended complex prompts. Uh, maybe because it's what I tend to use ChatGPT for the most. If I had a different, if I was in a different industry, maybe it wasn't this case, but I don't think so. Uh, honestly, most people I know tend to use as well complex and open ended prompts. Um, and they're the hardest to harness. They're the hardest to learn how to create because they're the most complex, right? So um, this is it pretty much with this lesson. I hope you found it helpful and interesting. Hello and welcome back to another lesson. Well, in this lesson, basically, we're going to just discuss some things you need to know uh, when you jump into designing your prompt, how to get better results by designing better prompts. So um, we have talked about the main types of prompts uh, as of right now. Uh, but you still need to know a lot when it comes to prompt design. There is a lot to know. So uh, when you design for pro when you design prompts, there are a few principles. Um, principles for effective uh, for the effectiveness of each prompt, and it depends from prompt to prompt, of course. But there are some main key points you should take in consideration every time you write a prompt in ChatGPT. So uh, there is the language and tone of your prompt. There is the engaging, um, uh, well, I mean, whether the content is engaging or not. Um, there are some uh, storytelling techniques. Um, you should also consider whether there is enough context and clarity within your prompt so that ChatGPT understands it and gives you the expected outcome. Also, you, you need to tailor your prompt based on your needs. Um, and uh, provide ChatGPT with data, uh, since of course it's a huge data database, but uh, sometimes it doesn't have the information uh, you need it to have. So um, even if even if the information you require might be on the internet, and you think ChatGPT has access to all of that, it it probably does. But at the same time, it's best to provide ChatGPT with the basic database of information uh, required in your prompt uh, and uh, there are a few other key factors that uh, could go in here uh, but we'll not go into that too much since uh, what i wanted to do in this lesson is just tell you uh, i mean it's more of a video than a lesson uh, i wanted to tell you that there are a lot of ways you can improve your prompts uh, but you should never use all of them at all at once because it will just make the prompt too too hard to understand for ChatGPT. And this is basically the concept of going too complex within the com complex uh, prompts. Um, you, when you go too complex, ChatGPT might not know what to take in consideration and what not to take in consideration. It might not understand or realize that it has to use all of the concepts you have uh, given it. Uh, and there are other ways you can tailor your... Um, I mean, you, there are other ways you can tailor the output of ChatGPT to your needs, but uh, try not to use the complex, complex, complex prompts. Uh, and this is not the only time we will discuss about these types of prompts. I just uh, wanted to give you a hint about why you should not use the way too complex prompts. Um, 
and we'll go even deeper in another lesson. Uh, but uh, this is a hint, basically, of what we will do in the following uh, sections, uh, section 3 and also section 4. Uh, so, um, get ready. You might want to experiment before we go into the following section, so you make sure you understand everything, everything we've talked about so far. And let's get into the fun stuff. So, uh, let's go ahead. Alright, so to summarize... But, I mean, you want you want ChatGPT to take the output into one direction or into the other, then it should go on the complex path. Now, I usually suggest you use complex open-ended prompts, since this will give you the best output, but if you want to get a creative output, then you definitely should go for simple open-ended prompts. Or it depends. There are cases when close edit prompts work. Uh, it depends all on what is the task you are giving ChatGPT. But pretty much this sums up uh, the main key points of this section. See you in the following one.